go home now? Well, <laughs> why did we start badly? I don't know. We're back. So it's great to bad. be here with you, man. Yeah, it's good to. This has been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, I don't think it's been just us two. Was it us two in LA ever, or did we have guests on? LA? No, we had a slew of porn stars and influencers <laughs> who helped us move into studio via hate watching. Who gave us? <laughs> <laughs> we were able to get hate watched so much in LA that we leveled up. Similar to Adolf Hitler, all the hate only made us stronger. That's true. Well, up till a point, and maybe then eventually it reaches a breaking crater, point. Yeah, we yeah. kill ourselves in a bunker, but sure. Um, Oh, it was that funny. was already my plan. <laughs> As listeners say, of this podcast will know. A, a death in a bunker is no bad way to go. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> people have died in much worse situations than a bunker suicide. I was going to say uh, there was like some, I don't know what, like post to this podcast somewhere on the internet. And I saw someone comment, bring sobriety back. And I thought of all the causes in the world, <laughs> like Israel, Palestine's going on and like, Children are starving in Africa. Like yeah. I love that. Like at least one person's cause is bring back the hardly listened to one-on-one -on -one <laughs> podcast that you and I had for a very short period of time <laughs> last year before effectively keeping the podcast the same, but just changing the name and adding John. <laughs> They're basically just saying get rid of John. <laughs> <laughs> it's a coded way of saying that. Bring some roadie back, also known as we don't like that other guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's, why is he getting so sucks. weird about the, the he's an ogre <laughs> I get that. lucas now the two hottest guys ever and john looking like fucking shrek thank you chloe for painting john as though he uh has too many or too few chromosomes <laughs> <laughs> it's unclear which whichever one it is um really i mean he looks one eye bigger than the other the lips are too large <laughs> We know this was rendered intentionally, by the way. This isn't a criticism of the artist. This is a... Chloe's amazing. This she is, did my tour poster. This is hats off to the artist. Mm -hmm. Hats on to John. <laughs> Hopefully hats on. <laughs> Ski mask on Ski to John. Mask. To that version of John. Ski mask on. Flames and golf. So uh, you were saying... What were you saying before? Oh, I was just saying it's good to be back here with you, you and me. It's guys. been a while. It's, it's been a while. It's been a long time, and um, I haven't even seen you like as a guy even in a while. Yeah, we could just catch up, and yeah. unfortunately, due to the nature of our jobs, it'll be recorded, but how are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing... Uh, there's a lot of stuff we have to talk about off mic. Really? Yeah. yeah. Good or bad? But I'm doing go good. Well, actually, I did want to riff on this. Yeah. Um, and... It, I've entered into so, what one might call a dom sub relationship. Actually, yeah. But what do you? Well, what do you mean? Not like f just sometimes sexually. We yeah, play yeah, those yeah, roles. Yeah. And we had a riff that I really liked that I thought we should bring onto the pod, which is uh, just a dom who's frustrated with his subs, like their kids, <laughs> just like you're at, <laughs> like you're at lunch. And you're, Hello. <sighs> Okay, well, if it's not an emergency, then please don't call me right now. Sorry, my subs drive me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, seriously? Sorry, sorry about that. Sorry, do it to me. Yeah, put it back in. Put it back in. No, I know. <laughs> That's the whole point of this. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I love you, too. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, my subs are acting up. They're driving me up a fucking wall. It's like so, you never get rest when you have subs. No, I put my piss in the cup for you not to drink. <laughs> yeah. Um, would you mind preheating the oven? By the way, I'm going to cook tonight. Love you too. Bye. <laughs> oh, I was ending it really affectionate. Yeah. <laughs> Love you so much. No. No, I know it hurts. Keep it in. Keep it in all day for daddy. <laughs> I love you too, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> it's all love at the end of the day with my subs. <laughs> There's no more loving relationship than a dom with his subs. <laughs> Paternalist dom. I just, uh, it's like inside the actor's studio. It's dom. <laughs> I just, um, the way I approach doming is it's all about the connection with the partner. It, it's about you know, looking them in the eye or in the asshole, as it were, and just sort of getting a sense of what energy are they giving and then responding in kind with a dominant energy. <laughs> it's interesting because I think um, 
certainly in the 50s and 60s, a, a, a popular school of thought was that really the dom drives dom sub relationships. But what I've noticed in the past couple of years is subs are really starting to <laughs> as well. Subs are having their day in the sun. And <laughs> or their assholes day in the sun, as it were. Um, but, 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 but a predominant school of <laughs> uh, you know, uh, and, and it's not a joke. I mean, uh, you know, in a real way, subs are starting to take center stage in popular culture. Charlie was on the other side. So what subs are in charge now? <laughs> it's like bushy eyebrows. So subs are in charge now? As he holds a production assistant's neck <laughs> under the table. <laughs> As he jerks off. So you're saying the pendulum started to shift. <laughs> he gets sucked off in studio. Wait, speaking of creeps, yeah. you saw Quiet on set? Oh, um, you no, were... I, I only saw episode one and then I would just was in kind of a mentally fragile place and didn't really feel like going the whole route of like every show that I loved growing up was created by mm -hmm. and orchestrated by a pedophile. <laughs> we can't have fun anymore. I don't know what the heck happened. <laughs> but like, can we keep some fucked up shit secret? Is that <laughs> is that too much to ask? I just like it's like nothing's fun anymore because we realize that everybody Whatever. controlling everything's evil. Whatever happened to doing bad stuff and not getting caught? I mean, ever, ever. <laughs> Because it used to be like, I get it. Like in the 70s, like rape and murder was just happening all the time. So and much. Nobody got caught. There yeah. were serial killers, serial rapists. And also, did you know this? I, I was watching a documentary about this, but like rape was not a highly punishable. Yeah. yeah. So you could go away for like a year for like it was like a petty burglary. To, yes. To that's still also a problem. Yes. But yeah. it but way worse. Like they have readjusted yeah. penal codes. Yeah. Penal codes. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um. <laughs> you know it sounds like what it sounds like the rules i set for myself <laughs> penal codes. i hate to do this but this week my penal codes are far shorter. <laughs> you violated subsection 1a of my penal codes which by the way was the first code that i created <laughs> now bend over i love you baby <laughs> you look amazing i love you you're my perfect sub, but you're being bad today. Cinnamon. <laughs> That's their safe word. <laughs> That's enough. Cinnamon. When they're being too nice, that's when Adam says their Cinnamon. safe word. Because <laughs> it's like, it's got to be aggressive. So you only say your safe word if it's being too positive. Yeah. I love you. No, you know what? Cinnamon. Wait, are you saying it to yourself? I'm sort of confused. I don't know what I'm doing. Really. Oh, okay, okay. I thought I knew. Here, wait. You then be the I got dom, I'll be the sub. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying I'm to just... get you to fuck up. Here, you be the dom. I'll be the sub. I brought a cane in for this purpose. Can we cut the mics for about 35 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Keep the camera on. This is for Patreon only. <laughs> <laughs> we have something we have to attend to. By the way, I want to say this quickly about the Patreon, and then we can go back to what we're saying. Yeah. Because I don't think we've promoted it on the main for a minute. Yeah. The Patreon really is like a lot of stuff happens to us in our lives and our careers that we just simply cannot leave open to talk about in the public. Yeah. If you're actually interested in like what is happening with us sometimes, I would really recommend going on the Patreon because we continually tell stories from the road and and in our personal lives that we can only share with yeah. people that are paying us. Yeah. So I'll just leave it there. <laughs> We just have to put them behind a paywall. Yes. Yes. Anyway, speaking of saying things that we don't get in trouble for. Wait, what? No, I just, we were talking about why can't anything happen? Oh, yeah. Quiet on set. Yeah. Well, so I, I don't know. You didn't watch it, but I, and I didn't either, but I was in the kitchen as uh, John and his girlfriend were arguing incredibly loudly about it because and you probably don't know this because John was the editor for a while. So he would edit out anything that made him look bad. <laughs> but he he has a policy uh, that is essentially he goes, if someone's been accused of sexual assault or pedophilia, they probably didn't do it. But if they've never been accused, in all likelihood, they have. John believes all rich people are pedophiles. Yes. And he believes all pedophiles are 
rich people? I don't know what he believes about pedophiles. Just that they're he, innocent. He has a guilty unless accused. <laughs> <laughs> In which case they're innocent policy. <laughs> innocent so, until proven innocent. Until <laughs> proven <laughs> Innocent until proven guilty, in which case they're for sure innocent. <laughs> um, he's going to be mad when he hears. Of course, stayed yeah, in. Of course, but this is anyway. This is just something that happened to me. It doesn't. It might not even be John. It was just my roommate and his girlfriend <laughs> happened, <laughs> happened to be. And arguing. for the purposes of the podcast and not making John angry, this might not even be about John. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> it just happened to be one of my roommates and that roommate's girlfriend, um, and. They were arguing about Quiet on Set, which was the documentary about Dan Schneider, who created a bunch of Nickelodeon shows and is pretty clearly a, a pet. I mean, a pedophile. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it, my roommate's girlfriend, I walked into the room. I was just sitting down for a nice lunch. You know, thank God my subs had given me a day of rest. <laughs> I could just relax and eat a meal in peace for once. I was finally getting a day off of doming. <laughs> and it had been a pretty heavy dom schedule for me. My whip hand was exhausted, as was my whip wrist, which is the wrist attached to my whip hand. Um, <laughs> and my thumbs were stinky. They stank from being in <laughs> my sub's butts so much. <laughs> no, but so I was sitting down to lunch and the kitchen is on this side and then this, the living room is on this side and then the table where we eat at the dining table is directly in the middle so let me just I was translate that for a second their apartment is a hallway it's a hallway and it's all connected yes so if anyone's anywhere everyone can hear everything yes precisely <laughs> so i was in the middle of this argument as um one of my roommates puerto rican girlfriends <laughs> <laughs> went went and just to my roommate she was just calling him this it doesn't even mean that it was his name she was going john you stupid <laughs> You stupid, John. That's stupid. It's literally in the documentary. And and then my other roommate, who we could just call John for the sake yeah, of this. Just change his name to John. Just change his name to, yeah, what his name isn't, which is John. Yeah. Uh, he was going, I'm just saying, this isn't even as bad as I thought. Like, it just doesn't seem that bad. I thought he was a pedophile until I saw this documentary. <laughs> <laughs> his policy literally is once he's, you find evidence he's a pedophile unless anyone defends or not even like no one's defending him in that documentary are they no no i don't even really think because i know he went on and did an interview since this came out mm -hmm. and i don't even think he's defending himself really he is trying to change the narrative because i saw tim Dillon did a really funny thing about yeah somewhere in his interview he was like i was the first person to put like black leads on nickelodeon yeah and then Tim did a whole thing about yeah. how he's like the first woke pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, all those other pedophiles are racist, but I'm a woke pedophile, which I thought was really funny. Really, really funny. But I guess everyone, I wonder if like, this is like more of an open question, but I wonder if, if the fascination, I shouldn't say fascination. Listen, anyone that does something wrong, getting caught for doing said wrong thing, I think is probably a good thing, but it does feel like our culture has a fascination with uncovering the wrongs of the past now more so than ever. Yeah. And I'm not even talking about a cancel culture because that's not really, it's not really cancel culture because you're just uncovering true things that are bad that people did, but more of a fascination of like, can we catching a pedophile? Ugh, we have to stop canceling everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cancel culture is getting out of hand. You can't even fuck a kid anymore in the 90s. <laughs> 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 Fucking a kid 20 years ago is now frowned on. You can't even reason. have already committed a bunch of heinous, heinous crimes against, against children. But do you think anymore? that's a natural... Because of cancel culture. Do you think we're, that's going to be forever? That that's what content is now? What? Well, I feel like it's like... We're using, we're using effectively like technology and communication now in order to out people for doing bad things. Mm -hmm. That's a, become a primary purpose of content is to out. It's like exposés. Mm -hmm. Exposés are in. Yeah. Do you think they're ever not going to be in asking for a friend? No. So you think in 20 years, if I'm doing bad things now, I should stop? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> As do you a think friend. the statute of limitations is going to keep getting longer and longer until it's, <laughs> it's essentially your whole lifespan? A friend of mine, let's call him Lucas, <laughs> wants to know whether you think in 20 years from now, there is going to be uh, a documentary coming out called Quiet on TikTok Clips. <laughs> Where if a, a certain comedian had been very aggressive in scripting fake crowd work, as well as giving massages to, <laughs> to club wait staff, to, co to comedy club wait staff, that there'd be some kind of expose in the future? Or do you think that cultural pendulum shifts and we could just go back to watching shows? I think eventually it'll just be normal standard content. Good. But I think they'll, they'll, it's cyclical, you know, I think maybe in 40 years, say, if you're a headliner right now who got big off of, say, TikTok clips and say yeah. your name is Lucas. Let's Zelnick. call him Lucas Zelnick. Zelnick. Lucas Carl for, Zelnick. For the sake of argument. Yeah, that's right, giggles. by the way. Carl. Carl is yeah. my middle name. And I, okay, first of all, I hear Connor, our producer, laughing. And Connor's not an easy laugh, so that's frustrating. Let me tell you this, Connor, and everyone else who's laughing He's at home. He's on fentanyl, by the way. Connor's on fentanyl. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you this, Connor. First of all, Put down the fentanyl for a second. <laughs> Connor. Connor. <laughs> Sorry, it's really hard to get him to move or he look up. He adores Connor. fentanyl. Um, I'll tell you this. Carl is the name of my late uncle, late meaning deceased, and he died of AIDS. Yeah, not so funny now, huh, Carl? I or, guess. No, uh, Connor. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Telling your dead it's uncle, also huh, not, not so funny now, <laughs> yeah. Carl, because you're dead. All that unprotected gay sex, not so funny anymore, is it, Carl? <laughs> that is, uh, I have to think about whether that, that can stay it? in. <laughs> yeah, we got yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Probably shouldn't keep that in. I don't know if, I mean, it's, I, the math I was doing in my head is, what are the odds anyone in my family will ever listen to that zero versus what are the odds that that's just karmically a terrible thing to allow <laughs> to stay on the podcast? Hi. I did this thing this weekend where yeah. I started taunting God in front of crowds. Yeah. Because I could tell it makes them really uncomfortable. Yeah. So I started saying, like, Jesus isn't my Lord because I'm Jewish. So I'll just say it. Fuck Jesus. And then I went, oh, Jesus, if you're up there, bring down the ceiling of this comedy club. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, so you started taunting Jesus and then essentially praying to him like, to, to smote you? Like telling him, to, like, like if you're real, smite me. If you're real, cut the audio on this microphone. And then I'd hit the microphone and go, see? And then everyone would get like quiet because they were like legitimately uncomfortable with what I was doing. Yeah. And then I'd go, okay, so let's just get this straight. You think, you actually think the ceiling might come down right now. And then Mac would get a laugh. And I was like, okay, so you really think that? Wow. And then I was like, so you think Jesus allowed the Holocaust? <laughs> but right now he's so mad that I'm taunting him that he's gonna bring down this comedy club. Well, the Holocaust wasn't directed at him, and he's kind of a petty bitch <laughs> who loves drama. I'm petty, Jesus. He said what? Okay, <laughs> bring the roof down. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I did two things. I Serious? washed feet and I turned water into wine. <laughs> does that sound like the kind of guy who's gonna stop a Holocaust? Or does that sound like the kind of guy who's gonna put a hole in the roof of a comedy club? Okay, you know what? Don't bring the roof down. Just make his his make his like tenth toe weird. <laughs> 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 like he's he gonna born. make it so that he tells people it's 11 but everyone who looks at it goes that's not 11 that's just 10 but the last one's weird and then he has to go no no, no look <laughs> it's two bones but it's like one thing oh, that's too mean make him really rich <laughs> 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 oh, that was too oh mean. that was too nice kill his uncle <laughs> <laughs> His uncle does what? Kill him. <laughs> I want him up here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too mean. Well, that's just mean enough. Give him his uncle's name as his middle name. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it's all been sorted out directly. It's, the karma is aligned. Now, Carl, get over here. <laughs> Fucking your mm. uncle. Oh, yeah, you're my little sub. <laughs> <laughs> I said you're my little sub. You agreed to listen to me. God, my subs are driving me crazy even up here. I love you too, Carl. You know I'm Jesus, right, Carl? You have to fucking listen. Oh, God, listen I, to my goddamn penal codes. I, I can't believe the nature of this callback is my dead uncle is subbing for Jesus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> my back. dead Jewish uncle is now Jesus Christ's sub. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is some brody shit, dude. Yeah, dude. No we're one so does fucking stop us. back. <laughs> we're so <laughs> goddamn back. You can't take us. So quiet on set. I don't, I didn't watch it, but I guess the only effect it had on my life personally was it sort of ruined a lunch of mine <laughs> that I wanted to have in peace. And it's just funny, just me just eating a sandwich as 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 John was going. I'm not saying he didn't do it. I'm just saying it doesn't sound that bad. <laughs> and then his girlfriend went, you stupid. You you stupid right now. <laughs> and that's not a good impression of her. No. She is Puerto Rican, but she would more say something like, you're utterly uneducated, Jonathan, even though that's not his name. His name's John Henry. She certainly does. In the scenario, <laughs> no, that's not, you know. <laughs> I will say she's been on the pot. She doesn't sound like how I'm doing an impression mm -mm. for her, even a little. She purely racist. She was saying which something I'll apologize for yeah. right now. I'm sorry. Yeah. She she'd look at John and she'd go, I'm gonna throw a shankla at you. <laughs> sorry. Connor behind the curtain. <laughs> We're working with these guys like on a consistent basis. Connor heating up heroin in a spoon. <laughs> these guys are racist. I need another hit. <laughs> Connor, like this, and in his head going, they really shouldn't say that. <laughs> Connor, unable to hold up his torso while still feeling a sense of tisk tisk towards our treatment of Aloe's accent. <laughs> we really are um unnecessarily savage when it's just the when it's just the fellas huh i know yeah yeah but we're not yeah we are there's really no <laughs> defending that well so we are um can you tell this story of our night at yeah. the cellar the other night or is that a patreon yeah you were exclusive? there so you can tell your perspective of it too i certainly I had my hear. own perspective of it so uh, we were at the cellar i was um eating before set you were with me just you, you came over to hang i had a set downstairs at uh the main room mcdougall street and uh i walk in from my sh spot at the fat black which is the other one of the other rooms and I walk in and I immediately see the manager of the comedy cellar talking to a guy who looks a lot like Dave Chappelle. Now, when the guy looks a lot like Dave Chappelle in most situations, <laughs> I go, that's probably not Dave Chappelle. <laughs> but at the comedy cellar, there's a pretty good chance it's him. And I was I knew I was second on this show. And I had just followed him like a week ago. And so I went, God damn it. <laughs> I think I see where this is going. I don't think he's here to just hang out. When I see someone who looks like Dave Chappelle, I always know it's Dave Chappelle because to me, each black person looks so different that I could never mistake two black people for each other because I'm not racist. But um, he was definitely there at the comedy scene. <laughs> <laughs> but sorry, uh, that aside, that was Dave Chappelle. That was this. certainly in 100% David Chappelle. Yeah. So they didn't even, this is funny, actually. No one even told me he was next. They just kind of assumed I got it. And I did. I, I totally got it. <laughs> There was no like, oh, Dave's going to go up. It was just you, they, Dave Chappelle was there and everyone didn't even. They kind of forgot I was there, too, which is valid. Super understandable. Very understandable. <clears throat> I'm not I'm not like a diva. Like, seriously, when Dave's around, it's like you don't even look at me. That's some shit I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, OK, so Dave Chappelle's here, but you still have to tell me where I am on the lineup. <laughs> I'm still part of the show. Well, the thing is, usually when he drops in, he'll do an hour. So the show's over. Right. The the time I followed him at brunch is very unusual. Usually he just he just goes. It's Dave Chappelle. He just does like an hour and the show ends. Yeah. And then this time he was there was the host, Simeon Goodson, the first comic, Greg Rogal. And then I was supposed to be second. But Chappelle goes on and again, he gets on stage. He goes, I don't have any material. And he goes, I have to get to a movie at 930. And it's like 915. So I go, fuck, I'm going to have to follow him again <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't think he's lying about that. I think it's probably I'm going to have to go up next again. He does 15 minutes of he's actually doing stand up this time. He said he didn't have material. And I guess it probably wasn't prepared material, but he wasn't like taking questions like last time. He was like doing bits. And when he got on stage, the sound was unlike anything I've ever <laughs> heard because the host Sim, Sim went, give it up for Dave Chappelle. And then they went, uh, uh, they thought uh, it was like, oh. Oh, they thought it was a joke. They're they thought like, it was ah, a terrible, ah, terrible ah, joke. <laughs> and then like, ah! it was funny because it was, it, it was such a mean reception to if it were a bad joke. I know. <laughs> like it was almost a boo. 
Mm-hmm. It was like, give it up for the one and only Dave Chappelle. And then everyone uh, was like, ha uh, 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 yeah. But it was one continuous sound. Yeah. And then it was like, uh, uh, yeah. like a roller coaster. And then they went fucking nuts. By the way, imagine never... being so famous. The sight of you sounds like a roller coaster. <laughs> it sounds like they're on an amusement park ride. I felt it too. Cause I've never, I, well, I guess you saw him. Had you seen him live go up before the brunch show? Had you ever gone to a Chappelle show and seen him live? Or just seen him anywhere at clubs around the city live? I saw him at the stand, but I never saw him perform stand up. I saw him hanging out. Yeah, because I had never seen him live. And I don't know. For me, it's like Chappelle is probably different than anyone else. I was on a show with Seinfeld when I was getting ready for my Comedy Central taping. And uh, I don't know. Seinfeld's just not that guy to me. He's just not my generation. Yeah. Like, so I just, it was cool, of course, but more to tell people. Mm-hmm. But in terms of the actual, like, him being there of it all, it wasn't. Yeah. And you've been on with Seinfeld, too, I think, right? Yeah, and yeah. Gaffigan and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and Gaffigan. But this is, I don't know, this is a lot different to me. Like, I was excited yeah. to watch him perform live. Yeah, 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 Ex- exactly. You also don't know what he's going to say, which is very different from Seinfeld, where you know Seinfeld's been working. Seinfeld works very tight material. Seinfeld did do a and a but it's not like. You listen to Seinfeld because you hear his bits and they're really well written, like structured jokes. You listen to Chappelle's thoughts on the world, which I think is yeah. a little different. So it's like if you see Dave Chappelle at any point, I think it's always interesting because you're like, what is he thinking? What's he about to share? I know. Exa- yes, exactly. He's more of a like thought leader. Yeah. So, and Seinfeld's more of like just like a comedian, Yeah, which isn't a dig. I think both. I think they would each kind of be flattered with those descriptions. I hope. Actually. Um, them listening to this podcast <laughs> god i love these guys seinfeld listening <laughs> these guys i get a kick out of these guys where's john i miss john you ever notice when john's gone all the riffs get really dark and offensive He's throwing something absurd a snowman melting who can talk where's the levity that john brings as well as the blatant denial of rapists existing at all come on i miss him Miss John, you do a better Seinfeld than I. I but that is what that he would say about one. John. Yeah, that's what he would say about John. Um, he, uh, so Dave gets on, and I go, "That's annoying to follow." <laughs> yep, I love. It's so cool that he's there, and also I'm terrified because I'm next. For me, it's a real treat because I don't, I've gone to hang at the <laughs> yeah, cellar with yeah. Jamie like three times, and every single time I've gone, I've either met a comedian who's a hero of mine or yeah. seen a comedian who's a hero of mine yeah. so just as an audience member and as a comedian for that matter i've really lucked out hanging out with jamie at the cellar Crazy. and i gotta say i'm really glad you were passed because i feel no stress of doing a set there and yet <laughs> my career seems to be helped every time i go yeah exactly <laughs> so uh, just from my perspective i'm terrified he's 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 up there he's doing well um He's, you know, he's Chappelle. He's funny. He's like interesting. He's very engaging. They're clearly very excited that he's there. He does probably 15 minutes. I have to. It it, wasn't this is in my time. head. This is in my head. He does like 12 to 15, which is like a normal set length at the cellar. Yeah. And I go, well, I wish he, I, that's not great for me. I wish he'd done a q and I wish they'd ask questions. Because at the brunch show, there was a feeling afterwards of like, we saw Chappelle. And then here he ended at like 15 minutes. And there was a feeling I felt of like, huh, we got wish we had more Chappelle. time with Chappelle there. <laughs> we got cock teased by Dave Chappelle. Yeah, yes. So then Chappelle, Sim- my subs at the cellar have been so annoying <laughs> today. They just want me to do 20. Uh, hello. Part of subbing is being OK with 15. Yeah. I love you guys, too. <laughs> so then Sim gets on and Sim goes, uh, you know, he, he does like one or two jokes and then brings me on. And I riff something we had spoken about. You tagged it up. Mm-hmm. Um, you tagged I'll say up the Sim did a good job of bringing you up. Oh, yeah. Of resetting the energy. Oh, yeah. So the hosts there are just all very professional and very good. I mean, it's, yeah, it's the cellar. Like, yeah. No one's going to like. I was nervous maybe that it was just like, and your next guy, Jamie, but he did do a good job of like quieting them, them down. down. Yeah. They were, they were able to kind of debrief what they had just seen. Yeah. And then waiting until they were sort of over that moment to bring you up. And then I do like 45 seconds of riffs up top that did well and then i go into my material which did fine worse than last time but this time i noticed that what no i was gonna say it's interesting if i take over the story from here but i want to know just say what you were feeling on stage 
But then it, the story got much more interesting from my perspective as I waited in the hallway watching you. Yes, I know exactly. So this is from my perspective. Yeah, yeah. I know you. So I was doing my material. It did fine. It did like a little worse than I wanted it to, but whatever. It was fine. I, I listening back, watching back the tape, I was like, I just didn't talk about Chappelle enough. I just, yeah. the first time I did like an hour, oh, sorry, an hour. An hour. I did an hour on Chappelle. <laughs> <laughs> I did a minute 30 and that felt appropriate. And then I started doing material and this time I did 45 seconds and it did feel a little like sudden. Yeah. Uh, and then, so I did fine. I did think I did like nine or 10 minutes. I think I, I get off stage. Sam gets on. I walk out into the Whoa, hallway of wait. the cellar. So I walk into the hallway of the cellar. Hold on. And then I look to my left to the comic who's next. I go, hey, what's up? And then I turn to you. And then in my head, I go, whoa, that was Chris Rock. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just said hi to Chris Rock. So I'm watching and you. And then Chris Rock is brought on. Yeah, so I'm watching me. you. And... Uh, but wait, let me finish my... Let me finish the... So basically, it was... It was <laughs> Simeon Gibson, Greg Rogel, Dave Chappelle... Me doing 10 and then Chris Rock doing about like 40 or something and ending the show. That was the whole show. And it's really interesting being the part of a story that gets edited out later. <laughs> <laughs> because to everyone in that audience, they go, it was crazy. There's a host. First comedian went up. Dave Chappelle goes up. And then Chris Rock is the <laughs> next comedian. Dave Chappelle to Chris Rock because it's a better story. You're like no a, one's going, and then some guy, and then Chris Rock. You're like a better help ad during a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Just pressing the 10 second forward yes. skip button. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. The only two comedians on this show were Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there was a host, and then Chappelle and Rock, and that was it. <laughs> well, here's what was so crazy is obviously... So there's like a little hallway area where if you're a comedian, it seems you were nice enough to tell the manager there that I was cool to sit there and watch too, because I saw her ask and you were like, no, 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 he's my friend. Yes. But like, basically that hallway area is for, if you're a comedian or I suppose a friend of a comedian, you can stand in there and watch some of the show as long yeah. as you're not too in the way. So when Chappelle's on, there's a pretty much all the comedians that are on the show that night are down there to watch Chappelle. Anyone wants to watch Chappelle when he goes on. And then as soon as Chappelle Even gets Todd off, Berry, who's also a famous comedian. Yes. Also a big comedian. A hundred percent. We came like, down to watch. Like er everyone, regardless of their level, is down there watching. Yeah. And then when Jamie goes on, you wouldn't believe it, but a lot of people went upstairs. Everyone sort of cleared out. And when I say a lot of people went upstairs, I mean every <laughs> single person went upstairs it was except for like me. A, it was kind of <laughs> like I farted. And then everyone just kind of slowly was like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> me performing comedy to those people was really like, letting loose like a bit of a shart it was like a, like a fart so bad it smells like you shat yourself. it was a social shart <laughs> yeah. socially the effect of jamie getting on stage was the same thing of if i had walked up to a table at a wedding wearing a full period specific and correct nazi <laughs> uniform, <laughs> everyone scattered and said this is no longer where we want to be if I had gone up in a full Luft, Lufthausen, Lufthansa. Lufthansa, Lufthansa armband Nazi uniform at a wedding that was not Nazi themed, <laughs> <laughs> specifying this it would be an inappropriate outfit at this wedding. It's just a normal black tie wedding. Everyone has, we know there's two types of weddings, non-Nazi themed weddings and Nazi themed <laughs> weddings. This is in the latter category. The, no, former, former category. The former category. Yes. I'm sorry. I haven't been to a Nazi-themed wedding. You'd be welcomed with open <laughs> arms. People would flock to you. In fact, if you were wearing black tie, it would be the effect that you had on the room as well, <laughs> which is you'd go up in your dumb little penguin yes. suit and all of the period-specific well-dressed SS officers would <laughs> scatter to get away from the guy wearing the bow tie. Exactly. Um, but anyway, so I'm down there because for me, I would say like as Jamie's best friend and also as a comedian co-worker <laughs> sorry acquaintance <laughs> colleague Dude, as by Jamie's... the way i got you the best gift ever really go, yeah go ahead it's so sweet yeah. um for your birthday it's coming up oh yeah it is yeah, i forgot um I, I can't wait but uh i uh as as and also given that like jamie and i are peers as comedians i would say it's equally interesting to me <laughs> to see <laughs> Chappelle go up as it is to see Jamie have to follow that 
because I feel much more oh, like right because right. you're going you're not going I'm Chappelle in this situation you're going I'm, I'm Jamie, Jamie. Yeah. yeah so I'm putting myself in Jamie's shoes much more than Chappelle so I, yeah. I want to watch Chappelle to learn but I also want to watch Jamie to learn what yeah because that's a situation I could logically be in mm -hmm. and have been in with other comedians. I mean, yeah. Chappelle's easily the hardest one to be in that yeah. situation with, but there are others. I wonder if he's the hardest. Probably. Well, maybe hard. I mean, listen, anyone, anytime you follow a majorly famous person, the riffs do sort of write themselves. So it's yeah. maybe not as hard as someone who's unknown just murdering, but still. Yeah, like, that is. Ethan SP at the cellar is a But it's still something unique. Fault. There's still a confidence you need to have in the face of something that would reduce your confidence to be yeah. up there. So I'm sort of watching to learn, and I'm very bought in on Jamie's set. But no no one else is down there, including Sim, the host, has gone upstairs. So then Sim comes back down. Sim brought me on stage, ran off stage, and ran upstairs. <laughs> like sprinting. Didn't just walk. He literally sprinted. He jumped the audience and vaulted up the stairs. Nobody could bear to watch Jamie <laughs> go on stage but me. Imagine I pooped on the ground, the same reaction. Imagine Jamie got up at the cellar in a period specific Nazi uniform, and this was not a Nazi themed show at the cellar, <laughs> which doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then Sim comes down and he I'm the only guy there. Yeah, I, obviously, he would, wouldn't have chosen to say this to me because I don't know him. But he was like, Chris Rock just got here. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, Hilarious. and then. Sim goes back up and Chris Rock comes down. <laughs> and it's just me and Chris Rock standing oh, next to Oh, it's just you two. Just us two oh. standing next Sim to each wasn't other even there. watching you. And Chris Rock is making like elevator silence sounds mm -hmm. towards me. Yeah. He's like he's like tapping the headshots on the wall, just like so Poor man like like saying like little things like almost the way that so someone would make small talk in a but i'm not gonna make small talk with chris rock and i'm not gonna bother him because i'm like a guest in this space and i'm so i keep looking at him and i keep giving him like a big smile like any way i can non-verbally express positivity without responding to him yeah. and we're standing there for for me what feels like an eternity yeah he's like Chow. and to him <laughs> yeah. a minute of my set feels like years Chow. to him Chow. And he's like doing these sounds, like just me and Chris Rock. Yeah. And uh, and then finally the manager comes down and then he starts to like be like, it's so crazy that on any given night you have two arena acts coming into a 70 seat room. But yeah. That's the seller. Man. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then watched Chris Rock go up. And um, and they ended the show. after That, that was the show. Yeah. It was the host. Who, who did the show? Dave in, Chappelle. In your head. Yeah. And Chris Rock. <laughs> It was fucking cool to see, dude. A Just three a, person show. A three person show, the kind of show people pay for, um, you know, pay hundreds of dollars to see at Madison Square Garden. I got to see for free in the hallway, and everyone who's on it was just a host, Dave Chappelle <laughs> and Chris Rock. So cool to watch. Awesome. And so awesome. cool to watch that alone. I actually did have to run after my set. I didn't yeah. even get to see Chris. Rock. I, I watched Chris's set alone. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't even see it. I had another set, but it's uh crazy. Yeah, crazy to be the the part of a story that gets edited out. Well, it's very I mean, comedy is very interesting because it's like um if you're a comedian, the walls I feel between you and other comedians are so low in terms of like the social nature of it. Like when you're on a show with them, you're all next to each other, or you're in a green room, or you're in the same spaces together. But the realities of your lives are so yeah. different. Yeah. It's like a weird. Yeah. I used to think this way when I was in the corporate world because I, I was the guy that took notes in the senior management meetings. And like I was there and I made like a corporate salary. I made like whatever, like low six figures, which was a lot of money for me. And I was young. And then the C I would be at, at the table with the CEO and I knew he made $60 million a year. Mm hmm. And it felt like, I guess there are a lot of jobs like that. You have NBA players, you have like the guy that just got on the team and then you have LeBron, but it's just one of those weird things where it's like, I yeah. guess Chris Rock and Dave Chappelle and you and me are all, we all have the same job technically. <laughs> technically <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I guess you can say that. Although Dave is going to get on a private jet out of here and I am too with my parents. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly enough, you and Dave have the most in common. 
Dave Chappelle. You, and Dave, I have and Chris a, Rock have way more in common than me and anyone else. I guess if it were like one of those New York Times connections games, yeah. But you only had to pick three of the four. Yeah, I would fit in much more with Dave Chappelle and Chris, and Chris Rock, Rock than, with than, than with you. Yes. Unless you wanted to do it off race, in which case it would be you and me versus Dave and Chris, mm. which you wouldn't want to do. We wouldn't do a verse. It yeah. would be. And if we would go by comedic style, it would be um, <laughs> hmm. me and Dave versus you and Chris. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> that's weirdly. What a I was lot thinking. of people call me the Jewish Dave Chappelle. Many because, people call me the Jewish Chris Rock. Because I underwrite my material and I hate trans people. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Me, because we're both addicted to pornography. <laughs> <laughs> and we can't keep a, a romantic we partner for too long. Goddamn <laughs> subs in line. <laughs> um, yeah, dude, so, that, yeah. Was, that was pretty wild to experience. I don't and know. then we just went up and ate. Yeah, it's so weird seeing because now I'm seeing like really famous. Like I see Schultz all the time. He always fist bumps me. He's like, "What's up?" And uh, he likes you. So weird. Is he friendly? No, he just does that every time. He's like, "What's up?" He definitely doesn't give the vibe of like, "Let's talk." But I get it. He's like so famous. It really is like when you're that famous. It's it would be very hard to trust anyone in a in a real way that you don't know, given not given not a very long time span of building that trust i agree why would you on on first meeting someone trust them if you're that rich everyone has an angle he's making like so much everyone wants some of what he has also i do think between comedians it's a like knowing your place means it's the nice thing to do subbing (laughs) it's kind of like subbing (laughs) It's and 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 it's interesting because <laughs> subs really have swung into the cultural limelight in recent years. So so subs are taking over now. <laughs> That's right. Oh. Subs are yeah. back. <laughs> Charlie Rose is injured. <laughs> Just beating the fuck out of her. <laughs> her. <laughs> um. No, but like, I think if you're a comedian, if someone one level below you wants a relationship or for advice, yeah, or, I mean a social relationship, not a sexual relationship, the nice thing to do is acknowledge that. But it's like, I don't have a ton of interest in giving advice to someone that just started. Yeah. I mean, I can give them like the basic advice, but I mean like really developing relationship. I have much more interest in mentoring someone who's like a level below me. Yeah. And I think the same goes with the super famous ones. It's like, I think if if we were on the cusp, like we just got our first Netflix special or something, the cool thing to do if you're Schultz is to, man, you know, you just, you know, you're in theaters and you're looking to move to arenas or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But like, what's he going to say to us? Like, we're just too young. He yeah. doesn't have lessons that are relevant to us yet. No, you know? I'm sure he could help in some way, but it's just not. Why would he? Yeah, there's no reason. And he has a finite unless he literally goes, "You're gonna be the biggest comedian in the world." Like, yeah. Even then, there's not really an incentive because he's so big. Like, it doesn't even help him to help someone who's gonna who he thinks is gonna be really successful because he's already so successful. How is that gonna help him? Yeah, yeah. He needs nothing other than to have like friends, you know. Yeah, but genuine friends. Yeah, actual friends, which he already has. Yeah, which he does have. I mean, you can never have too many friends. Me pitching myself to Schultz. I'm fast. I'm lithe, agile, pretty good. Rock what does climber. lithe mean? Um, I don't know. Is that a word? Yeah, L-I-T-H-E. Connor. Can we look up? L-I-T-H-E. I think it means like strong in a skinny way. Do you know what I'm saying? Lithe. Like you mean like a high strength to weight ratio? Yeah, yeah. Ag like fast switch is lithe. Yeah, you want some definitions? Yeah, of course, Connor. Kyle. Okay, Connor. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle. Oh no, it's Thin, not what I said. Supple and graceful. But so still, I am, I am you're lithe. I am lithe. Way. In your own regard, you're lithe. I'm lithe. <laughs> I read. <laughs> I'm a good listener. You're graceful. A generous lover, except when I'm Dommy. <laughs> and then I'm cruel by design. <laughs> <laughs> I have very strict penal codes in that case. <laughs> what is it? Um What's the FDR quote? Is it walk quietly and carry a big stick? <laughs> Is that the quote? I don't know. Connor, the, can we look like, up the you, FDR quote? Walk quietly and carry a big stick. I don't know what stick? you're referring to. 
Well, Connor will tell us. And Connor, if you wouldn't mind just taking a break from the fentanyl while you look this up, it'll help you. Connor, you can't just snort anything. (laughs) Speak softly and carry a big what? Stick. Stick. Okay. Okay. And that was an FDR quote, correct? So do you think maybe in his time that was just Uh, genuine advice? And oh, that was Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, in Teddy. So Teddy Roosevelt. Here's the thing. Which one couldn't walk? Here's the thing. FDR. FDR. Here's the thing about that quote: is that may have been genuine advice. Because he was so long ago, he might have been saying, be quiet and have a walking stick because you're hiking most of the time. It's the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a metaphor. It's like he literally means speak quietly and remember your walking stick. It's not a piece of political fodder. No. It's practical advice on the Appalachian Trail. <laughs> <laughs> he was kind of, if I recall correctly, he was beginning... I think he created the first national park in the modern national park system. He may have been saying that at a speech where he was inaugurating a national park to hikers. (laughs) (laughs) It might have been directed at people there to hike. I think the Germans sort of read into it a little bit, maybe (laughs) because they were anxious with all the brewing political conflicts. But originally, it was just, um, it was kind of poetic, like a Walt Whitman Mm. sonnet. Mm Mm-hmm. But anyway, one thing I always say is dom softly and carry a spiky stud collar. (laughs) (laughs) And that really means dom with love. (laughs) If there's one thing we can impart upon you for this episode, dom lovingly, dom firmly, and dom compassionately. (laughs) Doming is about fulfilling your sub's needs. (laughs) Unless you have a pain loving sub, in which case it's all about it's all about satisfying your own needs. Hammering and sorry, nail one second. I need to take through this. your subs clitoris. Why would you do that? I've made it very clear that is one of my rules in the penal code. You cannot break that. You know what to do. Get the biggest cane right now and come over to the podcast studio. I love you, baby. I didn't put my shit in the freezer so that you could let it thaw. Sorry, I gotta run. I'll talk to you soon. Love you too. I put it in the freezer to use as a club to hit you with. (laughs) (laughs) Hitting us up with your frozen poop. (laughs) My frozen poop is to be used as a spear, a club, or a dildo. It is certainly not left on the counter to become mushy as it was when it exited my butthole. Do you know how hard it is? To break off a log that large and consistent. (laughs) Usually it's two or three logs that aren't big enough to beat you over the head with. (laughs) This was one log long enough and sturdy enough to hit you with if frozen. And now it's melted. (laughs) I love you. (laughs) I love you so much. So beautiful. (laughs) You're not the best sub a guy could ask for. But you're the best person I could ask for. (laughs) You're not the best. But you're not something very well. Get out the cane. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right, we've done this riff too many times. Did you have a story to tell on the public? Um, on the public, I don't know. I mean, I had a pretty wild experience this weekend, but I'll anything save it make for you laugh Patreon. this week that you wanted to bring up? Well, it made me laugh. Well, I'll tell you one thing I'm really excited about, and I don't know if it's so funny. It's but I'm off the road for a weekend. That's not funny at all. Not even remotely funny. But I needed it so badly, yeah, dude. Yeah. I was like, yeah. really falling apart and my heels were hurting from like just standing up and doing comedy (laughs) actually this is kind of funny i I was on stage for my last show and the shows were really good all weekend this was my last show in seattle so four out of six because i had two in portland Mm -hmm. and uh i was not having a great set probably my worst set of the weekend it was fine i just like i didn't feel like i had the audience really super into me And towards the end of the show, someone in the front was like, do you want my beer? We have an extra beer. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And I took it. And I think because I just wanted to rile up the crowd, I just went as though I was taking a normal sip and I just chugged the entire beer. It was a blue moon wheat beer. Oh, no. With an orange slice in it already. And it just went down like rocks down my throat. Like it just did not... 
sit well at all. And I chugged it and the whole Ooh. crowd, like once I got half through the halfway through the beer, the whole crowd started going wild yeah, yeah, yeah. for no reason other than it know. was unexpected and a guy's chugging a beer and yeah. we're supportive. And we don't have anything to do in this moment because so, we can't laugh. So, so we'll just cheer. Woo. So they went nuts and I finished the beer. And as soon as I finished it, I went, I think I might throw up in front of 200 people right now <laughs> on myself on the stage. And I turned around and I started to spin out a little bit. Yeah. You like, turned around away from the audience? Yeah, I just turned away from the stage. Like a vampire. Yeah. Don't look at me. <laughs> I'm <an> idiot. <laughs> so I turned away and I just had to collect myself. I was like, you have three more minutes on stage. It's fine. Just don't even go to this place where you throw up. Yeah. And then I burped like four times during my closing joke <laughs> and just like tried to swallow it. But that was, uh, <gasps> I did have a moment where I was like, it's possible I just vomit on the stage. And I'm wondering what the sound. Yeah. I wonder if it would have been the sound that the, the crowd made for Dave Chappelle, but in reverse. Oh, what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> just spitting all the beer out immediately. Because <laughs> I'm so not that guy. I can't even chug beer as well. Yeah, I'm, me neither. Certainly not a blue moon with an orange. Slice oh in gosh, it. it's Eesh. chugging a wheat beer is like yeah, it's uh, it's like I'm, chugging bread. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it stuffing really a is. loaf of bread down your it was, throat. It was it was like yeah, it was and it was so profoundly unnecessary. Yeah, I'm trying to become overly attuned to ways in which my insecurity about a comedy show come out while I'm on stage. Yeah. And that was certainly one of them. <laughs> I chugged that beer because I was insecure that the audience just wasn't having a good time. And yeah. I went, this will make them feel something because it's surprising and yeah. bizarre. It wasn't you. That's not you. That's not me it's at all. Some pseudo version of you on the stage. If that. And that's who those people think you are now. <laughs> those 200 people just think, think I'm like guy. the kind of guy that chugs a beer. Just chug which is like, it's funny because it's so not you. Not at all. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not a chug of beer type of guy no, whatsoever. No. I was in um when I was in college, I I would I was part of this drinking club and um what? It was like a secret drinking club that I got initiated into. Oh and I was like flattered to be initiated, so I joined it. Mm -hmm. But it was like all the like Jack guys on the football team yeah. and then me. And in college, like I mean, I was like the skinniest arms and then just a pot belly from how much I drank in college, which mm -hmm. was so much. Mm -hmm. And every month we would meet and we'd take our shirts off and sit around a trash can and drink till we threw up. Actually? Yeah. Huh. It was so not me. <laughs> and I had this profound feeling like every time, like, like it was really nice to be included in something, but also like this wasn't who my parents raised. <laughs> like if my parents could see me, they would just be like, like I kept picturing my mom, like not being upset with me, but giving me like a big hug. <laughs> <laughs> Is <laughs> being like, oh, honey, you don't have to do this to have friends here. <laughs> and I kept being like in my head, like, it's fine. It's not a big deal. It, Mom. But I, I, I'd always think like if I drink too much tonight and I die, this would be like the worst possible way to die. Yeah. Just like dying while trying to socially assimilate in a way that really isn't me. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like anxiety death. Yeah. <laughs> It's like worse than suicide because it's just not a strong enough emotion to cause someone to commit suicide. Dying as a, on a couch as you call a guy a pussy who could beat you up. <laughs> Dude, you're, you're fucking gay. <laughs> just dying right there. Dying as I deny the fact that I listen to Olivia Rodrigo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I don't like her stuff at all. Dying like as it. you say you fingered a girl, you just you didn't finger. <laughs> You just kiss. Dying as I say that I had a mutual breakup with a girl who dumped me. <laughs> <laughs> we were just on the same page about it. We were, you know, I think it was just like a bad timing for both of us. Dying as you <laughs> pretend to understand football at all. <laughs> <laughs> Calling something a bad play that patently wasn't. Oh, come on. You can't. You should have thrown it there when it jumps in. very clearly should have been a run play. Oh, the tight end. <laughs> Someone questioning you on it. What about the tight end? <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> I think I'm dying. That would at least be a little nice because it would be like getting out of a 
sticky situation. That would, be, that would be good. Yeah. No, you would die in, in the moment where he went, wait, what did the tight end do that was weird? And you'd go, oh, oh I have to come up with an answer right now. <laughs> and then you'd die. <laughs> You're gay. Oh. <laughs> Him because he's an, like an immature college guy. No, I'm not. What? No. It did successfully distracted. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> what were we even oh, talking he's dead, about? He was an alpha. <laughs> if he called me gay, he must have been an alpha. He, he died, died in alpha. <laughs> he died in alpha. <laughs> he went out in alpha. Cheers to that. All them drinking and then throwing up on your corpse. <laughs> <laughs> you know what someone told me at the show? I, I guess we sort of we, have to end. Yeah. Um, this is just a fun fact. Closing word. Yeah, closing word. Unrelated fun fact. But um, if you just got surgery and you have an open wound, like somewhere that's within, like let's say, like on your arm, yeah, and you breathe out on it, the bacteria from your nose and mouth can actually infect the wound. And I talked to a medical engineer while doing crowd work mm -hmm. who said he had invented a device that was only legal in Germany, <laughs> a medical device. Mm -hmm. I was like, first of all, I don't really trust medical devices that uh -oh. are only legal in Germany. Yikes. But that um, sterilizes the bacteria in your nose. You put it in your nose so that when you breathe out, you don't infect your wounds. And while I was unable to make that crowd work moment funny whatsoever, yeah. I found it an interesting fact that I learned and that I was able to impart upon an audience who wasn't laughing. Yeah, and now the... Now that was the, the same show I chugged the, the pod now. Um, could we cut that just for being boring and shitty? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Don't cut that. Don't cut that. Uh, thank That's you. That's actually so fascinating. How the fuck do you do that? I don't know. He wouldn't talk about it because he said it's not legal for him to talk about publicly. Uh-oh. But Couldn't, you just said it. Ah, well, I don't care. I don't care about this guy's job, and I certainly don't think I'll get be getting a cease and desist from whatever company doesn't want to make itself public. Merck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's the podcast, and uh, yeah, join our Patreon. I think you'll like it there if you liked it here. We're about to tell a personal story about Lucas's life. Yeah, we are. And then get into uh, get into it mm -hmm. on Israel-Palestine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So pay. I'd pay if I were you. <laughs> Bye. Can I go home now?